Our competition robot this year relies heavily on 3D printed parts. We choose this process because of the design flexibility, accessibility, and the speed with which we can go from CAD model to physical part and make iterations. Through these series of videos, we hope to share the knowledge we have gained about making functional 3D printed robot parts. 3D printing is a rapidly expanding technology and there are several methods used to turn raw material into finished parts. The most common categories are FDM, SLA, and SLS, powder bed. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling and is what the majority of desktop 3D printers use. The most common style of FDM uses a heated print head fed by a filament spool to lay down layers of material. SLA or stereolithography printing uses a liquid plastic generally referred to as resin and a directed laser beam to solidify the material layer by layer. This allows for fast, extremely high quality prints at the cost of size and strength. The last category of printing technology works similar to SLA, but uses a solid powder, which can even be metal, as its source material. Each layer, the powder is fused using a high energy beam, or energy absorbing ink, plus an infrared light source. This allows for high quality speed, strength, and design freedom, and at the cost of, well, higher costs. Our drive base plates this year are printed using HP's MJF technology, and we have been really impressed with them so far. Since a lot of FTC teams have access to an FDM style printer, we will be focusing on designing for and printing using that technology for this series. Different filament materials have different properties. Here are the three most common filaments and their pros and cons. You can find these all on Amazon for around $20 a spool. PLA is an awesome first material to start on. It's easy to print and is pretty strong. However, it is brittle and has a low melting temperature, which means it will warp in direct sunlight or if you leave your robot on a car. ABS is a stronger material than PLA. It's what Legos are made out of. It has awesome strength and good heat resistance. The caveat to ABS is that it's hard to print, requires a lot of heat, and releases a lot of fumes, so you want your printer in a well-ventilated area. PETG has the benefits of both materials. It has better durability and more heat resistance than PLA, and is easier to print and less volatile than ABS. However, PETG is more flexible and is prone to stringing. While there are stronger filaments, such as nylon, they are over twice as expensive and require more time to get printing correctly. A part gets the majority of its strength from its shell, which are the outer layers. Think about how strong a pipe is. That is all just shell material. To quickly increase part strength, you can add a couple more layers to the shell thickness. Infill also has a large effect on strength. 3D printed parts are mostly hollow but the printer does print a lattice-type structure to make sure the part isn't just a squishy shell. There are two main parameters to edit with infill, percentage and type. Infill percentage is how much of the inside of the part will be filled in. Usually this value will default to 20%. While making this value bigger will result in stronger parts, anything past 40 or 50 doesn't change the strength much relative to the increase in print time and material used. Infill type does have a small change on the part, but is really not worth changing due to print time increases. There are some great YouTube videos we will link in the description that have more scientific support for this. The general rule of thumb we use is, for a structural part, use 30 or 40% infill, start the shells at 4 and increase if more strength is needed. Another large factor in print strength is print orientation. Because the printer is essentially attaching many flat cross sections of the part together, prints have an inherent weakness when stressed in a way that causes the layers to pull apart. For instance, here are two prints, one printed vertically and the other horizontally.
You can see how the second print stands up to much more stress, even though no other settings were changed. Our next video will cover the design of functional 3D printed parts, and when 3D printing might not be the best solution. Thanks for watching, and if you have your own tips and tricks, please let us know down in the comments. Happy printing!